Hello and welcome to the land of Ish. Today we are going to be talking about our armature for the moon for the set that I have been working on. If you've seen the previous two videos, you know that I am working on a new set that will sit behind me and it's based off of a drawing that I did that um, I am slowly building all of the elements to complete that set. So for this video, I am going to cover uh, creating an armature. In the last video, I showed you how you can find great elements that you can find at the thrift store or stuff you have from home that is an already made armature that you can paper mache. But today, I'm going to cover making your own armature. Also, um, I'm going to just review what we've completed so far and what we still have to complete for our new set. So for today we have our armature and this is my paper mache moon. And as I've explained to you before, I like using uh, canary yellow tracing paper, which I did find out you can find online. Um, you can also find it at your local art store. It comes in a roll and it's very light. And I use a basic paper mache recipe to to put this on. So here we have the armature almost completed. It's not fully completed because I wanted to show you the inside of my armature. I will show you how I started this and sort of some of the issues that I had. And one issue I had was that I created the previous armature was just the outside portion of the skeleton but I found that I needed to put cross beams through the middle here because when my paper mache started to dry, it started to shrink and pull this shape inwards. So I just wanted to show you here how I'm almost done with it. I just have to put this one last little side on and then it will be complete. And I used anywhere from these metal strips here, which are quite rigid. They're the, the metal strips that you would use to secure a chain link fence. I had some left over. And these are from uh, those orchid plants that people like to buy. They hold up the orchid plants. So I chopped this up and made this also on the other end, if you can see that. I put another one here just to hold the basic shape of our paper moon. Also, I put some chopsticks in here, but I will remove those. Those are just kind of wedged in there. I chopped those up and wedged them in between layers just to make sure I had a very rigid form. You want to use a wire that's thin enough to bend, but thick enough to hold a form. For my moon, I used a galvanized wire that doesn't rust um, because remember, we're using paper mache with some water and so we want something that we know won't rust or at least won't rust too much. You can also use coat hangers. Um, that would be a really good wire to use for an armature. That's kind of what you're going for is for that gauge or that thickness of wire. Um, so I have made my shape here and what I did was I made one and then I made the second and what I'll do is I will hold them together and then start attaching my wires that go between these two layers um, and hold them parallel to each other. So the best material I found to do that was, as I mentioned earlier in this video, were the wires left over from a fencing project I did. Um, these are the little wires that hold the fence to the poles so that they don't fly off. So these were really great because I could cinch them around the wire and I could clamp them down with a pair of pliers and they were pretty easy to cut too. It's good to have a nice sturdy pair of wire cutters to do this. And I had some other wire around too to uh, stabilize the, the vertical um, wires that I put between the two moon shapes. So I used those to keep them from slipping around while I turned my armature over and moved it about. Another material that's good to use for building armatures is chicken wire. And chicken wire is somewhat of a wrestling match, but I have made armatures with that and it works very well. 
and you you need a pair of tin snips to cut the wire but uh, you can make your moon with that so as you can see I have my armature and remember to put the cross beams inside the center before you start paper macheing that I explained earlier in this video and then our next step will be to start adding the paper mache paper okay to get started on this larger armature here of the moon I have my glue ready and I also have um, I've already torn up many, many pieces of paper here and it's good to do all your prep ahead of time because when your hands are all sticky and gluey, it's, um, it's really difficult to go back and try and get everything ready. It's also nice to have um, a wet towel on the side so you can clean your hands if you need to go back and tear some more paper. So for an armature that's larger like this, unlike the star, I like to start by doing just a small amount and allowing it to dry completely. And then that way, when you start putting on more layers, it's easier to stick them together without you know parts of it sagging. So what I'll do first is I will start with these longer pieces, which I already got ready and what I'm doing is like just dipping them in the glue. Let's see if I can make this a little easier for you to see. I'm dip, dipping them in the glue and then I have this nice long piece and I'm going to just drape a few pieces across. And they may sag a little bit but that's okay because once we start building this up a little bit more it'll all hold together really nicely. But the main thing that I want to do now is get a few pieces to just hold it together so that, <clears throat> so that I can start building it one layer at a time and letting each layer dry before I build the next layer. Um, sometimes I don't let the full previous layer dry. I'll, I'll just jump right in and start putting on more. But you do want to kind of let it get at least tacky. So as you can see, I'm putting the next, the next piece from here, I'm going all the way over here, and I'm gonna try and pull this one a little bit tighter without tearing it, and then I'll just wrap it around and do whatever I can to get it to just kind of go across there. Um, so I'm gonna keep doing this and cover as much as possible, but I don't have to cover the whole thing. The main thing is to start building up the paper mache so that as I add the next layers, I have one full piece to cover. It's going to take a little bit of time, but that's the fun thing about paper mache is the, the amount of time it takes to do it. It's meditative, it's fun, you can listen to your favorite book on tape, <laughs> but at the end what I'll have is a very light and uh, and, a, and a, a very easy to hang up moon that the light can pass through. And that's what I really like about using this tracing paper. If you want to find the same tracing paper at your uh, local store, your local art store, it's called Canary Yellow. They have it in white and they have it in a darker yellow. But um, I like this one because uh, I just really like the finished product. And sometimes, you know, when you finish, if you want to protect it, you can cover it with a clear coat or I've actually covered uh, some of my artwork with encaustic, which is also creates a really nice effect. So a little progress report here. I have got the moon almost finished with the hole in the back and I'm going to finish this, but I just wanted to show you that I made a hole up here at the top because I have purchased some LED lights that are battery operated, see? And once I have the glue all set and I have my paper mache finished, I will string these lights into my moon before I hang it up. Our finished moon and star. Now, let's make the letters for our castle. To spell out the land of Ish, I love creating letter blocks. 
This was a piece of wood that I had that I cut down to two inch by two and a half inch blocks and I painted them white. And then I had a stencil and I cut the letters out of paper, some fancy paper that I bought at the art store. And I made these blocks. All you really need if you want to make your own letter blocks is you need a glue stick and some matte medium. I like to use this because it's non-toxic and it's very easy and it doesn't make the paper wrinkle. So I just glue the letters down and I use the matte medium and I have my letter blocks. With a little Velcro, I can stick my letter blocks to my castle. And this is what I have so far. I'm almost done. I just have to create my background and my sky and hang up my clouds. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please go to my website and subscribe to my newsletter at www.landavish.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter.